Hi everybody, good evening and welcome to Thursday night story time. Um, here we are gathered, oh, I've just sat on top of the teddy bear there, sorry Ted, he's got his little mask on. I was very impressed by Rafa's snowman today, I saw a photograph of that with his um, hero's chocolate tub, that must have been hard work emptying that chocolate tub and then the grass for the hair and the mask, who would have thought a year ago you'd, we'd be building snowmen with masks on. Um, so there we go, there's our teddy. Um, yeah, good evening, welcome to Thursday night, Friday Eve as we like to call it. And uh, it's Thursday night story time, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of fun tonight before we have our story. Uh, just a few messages to say. First of all, thank you to everybody who sent in the snowy pictures uh, yesterday and today. They looked like great fun. You were having great fun. Uh, one of the pictures, it was a video I saw, and uh, it was Charlie out on a sledge, I think, maybe with his mum, who had a webcam on it, and it just felt, I was watching it, and I felt like I was going down the, the hill in the snow as well. It looked like great fun. Uh, and I know that uh, people have been making the most of the snow. It's not going to last forever, but uh, it is nice, although it does cause a bit of havoc with people travelling. Um, so, great for that. Thanks for joining. If you're watching um, tonight, tune in and um, send us a message. Give us a shout so we can give you a shout out and let us know. Big thanks to Mrs Murray from last, for last night's story time. Didn't she do a great job? I love that story. Mrs Murray does... Uh, has got a very soothing voice, great storyteller, and um, thanks Mrs Murray for dropping in last night, and we'll definitely do that again. Um, so, there we are, did you see our photograph from school on the Facebook page today? We posted up our Year 5, 6 bubble, have been working this week on making a dragon, and they went off exploring with our dragon today, up into the dining hall, and past my room, I was on the phone actually at the time and I could hear all this commotion thinking what on earth is going on? Chinese dragon, but they waited very patiently outside my room until I was finished and then they started again. And off they went up to our early years space and they popped their head through the window of the ladybird playgroup. I don't think they frightened the children, I think the children were really excited to see them and uh, off they went round the school. So if you're celebrating Chinese New Year this weekend, I think it's tomorrow actually, the year of the ox. Uh, we wish you a, a happy uh, Chinese New Year. Um, yeah, so that was great. Thank you for that. I've got um, two two shout outs tonight. One to, I think I mentioned it on Tuesday, but Miss Akhtar this week has been really busy because it's Islam Week in school, part of our RE curriculum. And Miss Akhtar has been zooming into every class and has been sharing her knowledge of um, of what happens in a mosque and how they operate and her knowledge of Islam. So thank you, Miss Akhtar, for uh, all the time that you've given to that this week. And a special shout out to, uh, from Mrs. Tabone. She sends a, a, a message, she messaged me yesterday and said, can you give a shout out to everybody on story time? Um, say hello to everybody at St. Catherine's. She's missing us. Um, she's enjoying life on the other side, of course. But she wants to say a special hello to Year 3. And her message to Year 3 is, don't forget to smile every day and pass a smile on. So that's a great motto to take into our weekend as we go, Mrs Tabone. Thank you so much for that lovely message. Um, okay, so are we ready for a bit of a game? Last couple of weeks we've been doing A to Z, uh, the alphabet game. And we were thinking about food last week and we were thinking about animals the week before and it really has tickled I was, I've was i been laughing um, continuously uh, since last week's game and um, just intrigued by some of the competitiveness that I've seen um, and not always by the children. So tonight we are going to play Family Fortune. I should have a theme tune for this. Um, and so how, what we're going to, I've been talking to lots of people uh, so each of my questions I've been asking and doing a bit of research this week. So are you ready to play Family Fortunes? Are you ready? You don't need a pencil, you don't need a piece of paper, you just need your brain. Um, so let me just see if I can find... Actually, I might be... I should have queued this up, but I might be able to find some suitable music for... Oh, let's see what this sounds like. Can you tell me who the theme tune is? Do 
used to be on the television this programme theme for a British TV game show? Anyone know? Ready for question one? Oi! Anybody? <laughs> I knew you'd get there. Yes, that was a bit of bullseye. We all love a bit of bullseye. Right, here we go. Question one. And some of these questions are based on research that I've been doing this week in school. And some of these questions are... But well done to um, Mrs Phillips and Mrs Murray and Rafa. All got bullseye. Um, so some of these questions are based on research that I've been doing at school with the help of uh, some of my colleagues in school. So first one up here, I see Mrs Phillips on. Um, tonight, this is a question from Breakfast Club. So I asked a hundred children in Breakfast Club this morning, what were, what is their favourite breakfast? What is their favourite breakfast? So all you have to do is type in an answer that you think is one of the top five answers. What is the favourite thing that they have at Breakfast Club? That's the question. What's the favourite thing they have at Breakfast Club? Right, we're going to put on a theme tune and... Um, We'll give you a moment or two to answer some Next to think. time you're at the checkout and you hear that beep. Next time you're at the checkout and you hear that beep. <laughs> Next Boy, time screaming. you're at the checkout and you hear that beep. Coco Pops. Next time you're at the checkout, the market Give you a couple of minutes. Well, well, we'll give you one minute, 60 seconds. Theme tune for Supermarket Sweet Toast. I like it. We've got Cheerios there, we've got Coco Pops there, we're going to reveal the answers in a moment. In fact, we could do this as... Oh yeah, we've got that tune! Okay, 30 seconds to get your answers in. Coco Pops, Cheerios, Toast, Boys Screaming, Yo. Some good guesses in there. Mrs Phillips isn't guessing because I think she knows it. Weetabix, Weetabix. Yep, Next I thought that. that yep. Alright, I'm going to reveal the answer. If you said... If you... Weetos, we've got one. Okay, we might have some more. So if you said... Chocolate croissant... The haggis. Now, that should be served at Breakfast Club, Tim. But unfortunately, it's not uh, yet. Uh, if you said chocolate croissant... You can give yourself two points because two people said that. If you said Cheerios, but we'll give you any cereal for that. So if you said cereal, <laughs> you can have eight points. If you said, here's a surprising one that appears on the, fr the favourites of the children at Breakfast Club. Very healthy in there. Fruit salad. Fruit salad. <laughs> 20 points. If you said croissants with jam. Oh yes, so culture in there. Croissants with jam, you can have 30 points. And if you said, as somebody did, toast, although it's actually buttered toast, but we'll let you away with toast. That's the top answer. Look, there it is. There's the proof. Can you see? It's all written out. See that high-tech scoreboard there? Give yourself... If you said toast, give yourself 40 points. Keep your scores going, OK? Keep your scores. Keep your own scores, because... I just haven't got the staff to help. So that was question number one. Well done, that's us getting the idea of it. The next question is, I'll give you a minute to think about it, then I'll ask you the question. We'll put on a theme tune. And the question is about the top reasons for people being late for school. These are genuine reasons for people being late at school. So I'll put a bit of theme tune on. You can have a bit of a chat before we guess um, what our answers are. Let's see if you can work out which song this is. Then the banker endorsed a blank cheque which he crossed and changed. Oh, I don't like that song. We'll try this one instead. You don't need to guess yet. I haven't asked the question yet. So, right, are we ready? Here are, here's question two. So I asked 
I checked on our little device that we've got in school. Well, I didn't actually. I asked Mrs. Johnson and asked Mrs. Johnson to check back on the last 100 reasons why people had been late for school. Can you name them? Any of the top five? We want the top five reasons why people have been late for school. And we'll give you 30 seconds to get your answers in. Here we go. 30 seconds. <laughs> We're not having to guess Mrs. Phillips the theme tune. That is blankety blank. You're good at that. Oversleeping. We've got traffic. We've got somebody saying the alarm didn't go off. The car didn't work. Okay. We've got all, most of the answers in. Not sure if Mrs. Murray's answered yet. Oh, here it comes. Traffic from Mrs. Murray. Slept in, and thank you. And would never sleep in. Right, here we go. If you said that you had an appointment, you can give yourself <coughs> six points. An appointment, and that was the reason for being late for school. If you said that you were unwell before you came into school, so there was it was related to an illness, <coughs> you can have 12 points. If you slept in, as a few people said, you can give yourselves 18 points. So that was the second top answer. And the top answer, why people were late for school, according to St. Catherine's uh, system, so anything to do with sleeping in or an alarm not going off, that would count uh, as second place. Anything to do with traffic or transport, top answer. <laughs> Give yourselves 62 points. That's how many people had trans... Look at that. The top tech scoreboard there. 62 house points. Okay, well done. All right, are we ready for question number three? Question number three. Oh, I, I hope you're having fun. hope you're having as much fun as I am. Question number three is... Um, oh, yeah, you, this is quite an interest. Not to do with school. Well, sometimes it is when we're going through lost property. This question is all to do with things that come in pairs. Don't give me your answers yet, just have a think about things that come in pairs and we'll have this theme tune. You know what this one is? I'm never home in time to watch this, but I love this programme. seconds here we go then ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls we asked 100 people to name something that comes in pairs let's see if you can get any of the top five answers so yeah that was the theme tune for countdown so we'll give you oh we'll put, we'll put another theme tune on give you 30 seconds to get your answers in let's have oh i like this one this is a blast from the past this one <laughs> Good answers here. Socks, twins, socks, shoes. Socks, more people with socks. Okay, here we go. In the top five, right, here we go. In the top five, and so in reverse, things that come in pairs. Scissors. Nobody said scissors, but if you said scissors, that was in fifth place. Um, pants. A pair of pants. Who'd have thought? Ten points for that one. No, don't think anyone said pants. Um, somebody said it. Twins. Of course, twins come in pairs. And here's something else that comes in pairs, although not always in our house. We've got a massive basket full of odd ones. Socks. <laughs> 15 points if you had socks. 15 points. And the top answer, things that come in pairs, is shoes. <laughs> if you... 
So well done if you said shoes. They are the top answers there, just to prove that I'm not just making it up as we go along. If you said shoes, you can give yourself 50 points. Well done, everybody. Next question. We've got two more questions to go here. Are you having fun? Is this good? Uh, next question is, I asked Kirsty what the favourite food is that she serves at lunchtime. And I asked her if we had 100 children, how many would choose what would the top five be and how many would choose each? So, time to think about that. What's on our school meal menu whilst we have a bit of um, ah, yeah, a bit of a theme tune? Let's see if you can work out what this one is. Not any points for this one. So, school meals we're thinking about. Oh! Hold your guesses. Hold your, hold your guesses. Hold it. That's well done, Mrs. Phillips. This is blockbusters indeed. Right, okay, enough of that. Let's have your guesses. So we're looking at the top five meals that Kirsty serves in our kitchen. These are genuine answers. What is number one? What do you think is in the top five? So get your guesses in. We've got some coming in. Oh, I'll put some music on whilst we're, we're guessing here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a different one. Mince and dumplings there. I can see spaghetti. I can see pizza. I can see soup. I can see chicken nuggets. I can see fish fingers, all of which are very nice. But are they in our children's top five? You're about to find out. Do you know what this theme tune is? Pizza, says Susan. That might be a bit of insider knowledge, who knows? Theme tune from Catchphrase there, here we go. In fifth place is roast beef. Roast beef, everyone loves, Kirsty says, a roast beef dinner with her Yorkshire puddings. In fourth place, nobody said roast beef, so I don't need to tell you many points. That is in fourth place. If you said mince and dumplings, which I think <coughs> and did, you can have two points. Well done for mince and dumplings, very popular one. If you said hot dog, as somebody said, it was catchphrase. Um, if you said hot dog, it is worth seven points to you well done <laughs> sorry that was a bit loud that one and undeserving it was only in third place if you said burger yep yeah, i think we had burgers yesterday uh 30 points for the second place one so 30 points for the burger and here we go number one food served in kirsty's kitchen which is popular every time children cheer and they eat it and they ask for seconds every time they go up. It's pizza! <laughs> so well done if you said pizza. If you said pizza, you can give yourself, can you see that? 60 points! 60 whole points! Well done for that. Okay, last question. And this is about, so this is, I'm ask, going to ask you to think about days, of, we asked 100 people, I've done this research, 100 people, which day they get up, which day they would get up early on. So which day, we asked 100 people, name a day that you would get up early. Don't give us your answers yet, get time to think about it before we put the answers on it and we will put this theme tune on. Oh, I know this. Do you know this? Oh. It's a bit of a slow theme tune, this one. It takes a bit to build up. I might come back to it in a moment. All right, that's enough. Yep, somebody said it. Mrs. Money said it, Mastermind. Okay, so here we go. Let's have your answers then, please. We asked 100 people, name a day that you get up early. Name a day that you get up early. Can you think of a day that will be in the top five of the 100 people that I asked? 
uh, which day they would get up early. So, off you go, let's have your quizzes, let's have your answers, let's have some entertainment as we go. It is mastermind. Okay, so we've got a Sunday there from Anne, we've got a Saturday there from Mrs. Phillips, we've got Christmas Day from Mrs. Murray and from Rafa and from Aloysius and Gabriel. Christmas Day, of course we get up early Christmas Day, but is it in the top five? You were about to find out. Christmas Day, that seems to be a popular one. Christmas Day, Tim, thanks for playing along tonight, Tim. I like playing Thursday night games because I get a chance to drink my hot chocolate during story time, which is good. Right, enough of the mastermind theme tune. Here we go. Are you ready? Your birthday, my birthday. You get, you, your birth, my birthday. You get up early on my birthday. Lovely, that is so kind. Thank you. First of December, um, just passed. Uh, who knew? Right, here we go with our five days in which you might get up early. If you said you got up early, of course, on a school day. <laughs> that would be a very good answer, and that would get you three points. If you said you get up early on a Sunday, <laughs> then you get up, then you get ten points. So well done if you get up early on a Sunday. I think Anne said that. If you get up early <laughs> on your first day at school, I hadn't thought of that one. First day at school, you get 16 points. If you get up early on, this is second, second top. If you get up early, a few people said this, on a Saturday. <laughs> 27 points. And here we go. The winning answer. It's Christmas Day. <laughs> and that's worth 33 points. Well done to everyone. 33 points if you got lots of people guessed that one correct. Okay, so I hope you've been keeping a running total of your... Po oh, I tell you what, let's do one more question just before we finish. Let's do one more question. And this question is going to be, we asked... A hundred children in the year five, six bubble today. What is the favourite thing that you do at school? Let's see if you can work it out. One last question. And here, see if you can work out this. Uh, I'm sure you'll know what this tune is. It's not really a game show. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Ready for that? We're queued up, so we need your answers. It's a, it's if you can tell me what are the top five answers from the hundred children in the year five six bubble we asked today. What is the favourite thing to name the favourite thing they do at school? Okay, yeah, that was Strictly. Yeah, I love that music from Strictly, and actually, I love Strictly as well. Um, okay, name them. Name the favourite thing that you do at school. What do you think the boys and girls in the year five, six bubble said? Name the favourite thing you do at school. Okay, let's put the music on whilst you think of your answers and... Playtime! Play! Chat with friends. Being with friends. All good answers, but are they the top one? R.E. of course, we, well, who knows, Mrs. Murray? Break time, yep. Okay. Right. Okay, so, here are, oh, oh. Here are your answers, the top five things that children do at school. Um, did anyone say spellings? Spellings? Did anyone say spellings? If you said spellings, you get yourself two points. Did anyone say art? If you said art, you get yourself eight points. Did anyone say maths? I'm sure Mrs. Tabone would have said maths. 
If you said maths, you'd get yourself 10 points. Oh, lots of people here have said break time. Is that in the top two answers? Well, if you said PE, <laughs> you, get, you get yourself 20 points. In top place, the favourite thing for chosen by 100 children in the year 5-6 bubble today, that might be true, that might not be true, is... Playing outside with friends. <laughs> and if you said that, you can have 60 whole points. Well done. Fantastic. Great stuff. So there we go. That's the end of our Thursday night game show. Let's have some music just to finish it off. And I'm finished my hot chocolate. There we go. Oh, that was great fun. I loved that. We should maybe do a proper game show when, after we come back after half term. A proper quiz night. Would you like that? Well, type it in the comments if you think that would be a good idea. We could have a family quiz night on um, Facebook or FaceTime or Zoom or something like that for a bit of fun. I think that'd be a good idea. No, no more please? Or, ah, correctly punctuated Tim. No, more please. <laughs> Very good. I've got a lovely story for you tonight. So we've had great fun with that. Uh, quiz show. I noticed tonight as I was uh, outside we had a uh, beautiful sky. I, I don't know if you've noticed it's been a lovely sunny day today and the sky was really light quite late on this evening so even at six o'clock you could see over in the west side of the city there was still some light in the sky. So it's going to be a clear night tonight I think we'll be able to see the stars and we'll be able to see the moon as well and this evening's story is a story, a beautiful story called Moonbird that uh, I found in the Year 5 classroom today. So um, it's a beautiful story. Um, I think it was the guy who wrote the Dr. Zeus books who said that when you open a book, they just take you places. You, it opens your mind, it opens you to a place where you've only maybe ever dreamt of. And this is one of these stories that just expands your mind and takes you to places that you've maybe only ever dreamt of. And it's a beautiful story of Moonbird. So I hope that you enjoy this evening's story. Beautifully illustrated. So this is by Joyce Dunbar and Jane Ray. Moonchild was blowing bubbles. Big pearly moon bubbles they were, floating off into outer space. Some burst upon the spikes of stars, some floated all the way to earth and burst wherever they landed. One landed by an earth baby's ear. Pop it went, wrapping the child up in silence. But this was no ordinary silence. This was the silence of the moon. What's wrong with our child? said the earth baby's father, who happened to be a king. My baby doesn't smile when I sing, said the earth baby's mother, who happened to be a queen. He doesn't listen for his name. Louder and louder they called. Orla! 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 They sent for the royal soothsayer. Let me just see. The king and the queen and the royal soothsayer. A very wise person. And she shook a silver rattle by the baby's ear. Orla did not turn his head. Your child cannot hear us, said the soothsayer. Can't hear, said the queen. You mean the royal prince is deaf? Oh no, not deaf, said the soothsayer. This child can hear, but not earth sounds with his ears. He hears different sounds in a different way. That can't be so, said the king and queen. Of course he can hear us. 
but no matter how loud the king and queen shouted, their son did not hear him. Because he could not hear, Orla did not learn to speak. And the king and the queen were heartbroken. How could their child ever be a king? Orla became known as the silent prince and his parents sent far and wide for people to help him, but nothing worked. Until one day when Orla was five years old and he was playing in the palace gardens alone when he spied a moonbird in a tree. And the moonbird spread his patterned wings and spoke to Orla. So you can just see Orla in the picture there, just down there, and this beautiful moonbird. And this is what um, the moonbird said. Follow me, said the bird. Orla was so surprised to hear a voice that he could only do as he was told. There was magic in the moonbird's song. Whoever heard it found themselves in a moon garden where fruit and flowers grew never seen on earth and where animals had magic powers. There's Orla there, sleeping. At first, Orla slept in the moon garden and when he awoke, he found a soft-eyed gazelle staring into his face. Just like the moonbird, the gazelle spoke so that Orla could hear. As I speak with my eyes, you can listen with yours, she said. That's the gazelle speaking there. It's a gift. You will be able to share it with your mother and father. A silver monkey helped to care for the young prince. With his hands and the movement of his body, the monkey talked to him. Soon Orla could talk with his hands as well as any of the young silver monkeys. And they could send messages across great distances as they leapt across the treetops. They made mischief and they played jokes. With the gazelles he heard the music in the trees when the breeze blew. Eye music, they called it. They heard voices in pools and laughter in leaves and singing in waving grass. The moon bird appeared again. It is time to return to your family, he said to Orla. Orla was so excited. Will I be able to talk to my parents, he asked. He followed the moonbird's song out of the moon garden and burst into the palace. Mother, father, he called, and he went rushing over to greet them, listening with his bright, clear eyes, talking with eloquent hands. The king and queen were amazed at the change in their son. Orla, where have you been? they asked him. Orla did his best to tell them but they could not read his eyes. They watched the strange and beautiful dance of the son's talking hands and his silent mouthing. He seems to be talking to us, but we don't know what he means. We don't know how to talk back to him, they said to the soothsayer. We can learn, said the soothsayer, who had been very quick to pick up the boy's sign language. I don't know how, said the queen. Kings don't talk with their fingers, said the king. Orla felt so sad. He so loved his mother and father and he wanted to share what he, what he knew. Just then, the moonbird flew through the window. Listen to the song of the bird, said the soothsayer. Then you shall have your answer. The moonbird sang his song. He sang of the stillness of mountains and of the sounds beneath their silence. He sang of the shining earth as it turns in space. He sang of the moon and the stars and of worlds beyond this world. What's it all about? asked the king. I can't hear anything, said the queen. But Orla heard. Watching all the while was Moonchild. He hadn't meant to cause so much trouble. What could he do to put it right? He blew an enormous moon bubble which floated off into space and landed right over the kingdom. Everyone was wrapped in the moon silence. And what did they hear in this silence? 
With their eyes, they heard the moonbird's song of the earth. In their hands, they held the moonbird's song of the moon and sun. In their hearts, they felt the moonbird's song of the stars. They saw and they heard and they understood as never before. And the king and queen put their arms out to their son. How could we have been so blind and deaf? Pop, the moon bubble burst. Orla had something else to show his parents. A pip from the moon fruit in the moon garden. Together they planted the pip in the royal garden. Now the moon tree is a million years old and the moon bird sings from its branches. Its song is in the pictures in your mind. And that's the end of that wonderful story. Beautifully illustrated moon bird. Stories can take us places that we just don't anticipate sometimes. And especially good when we can't travel so far just now this is our final story time for this half term and uh, tomorrow we gather together in our uh, well done assembly at half past one do join us for that that'll be our final uh, event before we have half term holiday next week and i know we can't go very far next week but i do hope that you'll enjoy a break i do hope that you will take a break from the schoolwork. Uh, you'll be able to relax and enjoy yourself and then get refreshed for getting back into it again when we get back after half term. You've been doing really well with the learning at home, boys and girls. And uh, as I say, all our teachers have been telling me how impressed they've been with how hard everyone's been working. So keep up the good work tomorrow. See you well done assembly and then enjoy a lovely week's rest away from your schoolwork. Before we go tonight, we're, we're going to finish with our night prayer. We'll say thank you to God for our friends and for our family, especially those that we can't be with just now. And I've seen one or two comments about people missing each other and looking forward to hugs. Absolutely. Well, we thank God that those friendships that we have, even though we might not be able to see people just now, we can continue connecting with each other. We might just have paused the cuddle bit, the hug bit, but as soon as we're back together again, it'll be like old friends meeting. And that's just a lovely feeling. So we'll say thank you to God together as we say. God our Father, I come to say thank you for your love today. Thank you for my family and all the friends you give to me. Guard me in the dark of night and in the morning send your light. Amen. Of course, we didn't say who the winner was of the game show tonight. You're all winners. And as Mrs Murray said last night, it's the taking part in it that counts because if you didn't take part, we would not have had half as much fun. Thanks for joining us this evening. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.